Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and we're looking at a product from a Schrade today. This is the Schrade SCX9, SCX9. So the thing that's unique about this, it's an axe and it also has in the handle here a uh, saw that can swing out. So we're going to talk about maybe the pluses and the minuses of having something like, like this. Uh, pretty innovative that they would put these two things together. And uh, if you're familiar with some of the other Schrade axes, like the SCX2 and the 2L, I actually really like those, especially as um, bang for the buck, good amount of money that you're going to spend compared to what you're going to actually get in the value of the item. So I'm hoping this thing will show us that it can function well and um, you know be one of those unique things where you get the axe and the saw together. Let's uh, zoom in. We'll talk about some of the specs, and then we'll show you what it looks like in use. All right, so here's a close-up of the Schrade SCX9. Some of the details, your blade length for the axe is 3.3 inches. That's 8.30 centimeters. Your blade steel is titanium coated 3CR13 stainless. Your overall length, 18 inches. The saw length, and we'll show you that in one second here, is 12.5 inches. Your handle material is glass-filled uh, fiber, and your sheath material is nylon. Your weight is two pounds, 1.3 ounces. One of the first things I wanted to do here is compare the Schrade SCX2 versus the SCX9. So your um, blade length for your SCX9 is 3.3. Your blade length for the SCX2 is 3.8. Now that, as you can see, it's going to be because of, be because of the curve in the axe. You're going to get more weight um, out of the SCX9 versus the SCX2. It, it does also have a longer handle. And so um, because of that, you're going to basically get more power, I think, overall out of your SCX9 as compared to the SCX2. The SCX2 is much uh, you know, kind of a compact. You can throw this in a pack, uh, a very small pack easily. You can put it on your hip easily. The SCX9 does give you the versatility of the saw and the axe together um, and does have some extra weight. So I think you're going to get more power out of that axe. Here's a quick comparison of the SCX2 versus 9 when it comes to your length, just so you can actually see what that looks like. So you're talking 11.8 inches versus 18 inches for total length. Here's a look at the sheath that comes with the SCX9. And basically you got this hook and loop. You're going to open this up and you're going to slide the handle down in through this. And then once this gets, basically the head of the axe is here, you're going to fold that over the top. So it'll look like this at the end. On the back there is a loop here. So you could run this. Uh, you know, through a belt if you wanted to carry this on your belt. For me, just because of the length of this axe, it's just going to be too long for me to comfortably have that hanging off my belt. I like something a little bit smaller if it's going to be in my belt. But I'll show you real quick now how to actually put the sheath on the axe. So you're going to open it up and then slide the handle down in like so. And it is pretty snug, so you want to be careful that you don't you know, get your hand caught on, you know, the blade or anything when you're actually putting it on. And this is a little bit, has a little bit of a movement to it in the back so that allows you to get that back uh, pommel all squared away. Put this over the front, hook and loop closure, and now you're ready to go. Here's a real quick look at it when it's actually on my belt. So I ran that little, uh, my belt through that little loop there. And it does have some movement, but in general it's not terrible. Again, for me, I like something maybe, maybe down to here. So that's an extra maybe six or eight inches beyond what I would normally want to carry on my belt. But uh, if I didn't have a pack or something else and I had to carry this around, you can certainly put it on your belt quite easily. The other main thing that's going to make this axe unique is obviously that you have the saw blade inside the handle here. What you're going to do is unsnap this snap. And I, I do want to let you know that this has never uh, come undone un unintentionally, so that's nice and secure. Then you've got this button down here at the end. You're going to depress that. And as you do that, you swing out your saw blade. If, as you're bringing out the saw blade, you let go of that, it's going to lock in right there. So that's locked in. So you need to depress it and then swing it the entire way out. And now there's your saw blade. Let's do some actual chopping. This is some dead wood and it is pretty small, but we'll see how the axe works on this. That was quite easy. Got another one down here. That was easy enough. Move over to this one here. So those three smaller cuts, but definitely no problem for the SCX9. One of the things I like about the Schrade SEX2 is that it's small enough and compact enough and the blade isn't ginormous so it's not um, 
too much to ask of it to actually do some chopping, but also to do some finer work here. And I think because of the size of this blade, that shouldn't be an issue as well um, for the SCX9. But let's just show you real quick. We want to get some shavings off this uh, dead piece of wood. How easy is it to do? Here's what that looks like. So no problem using the SCX9 to get some of those finer shavings if you want to get a fire started. All right, let's do some cutting with this saw now. I'm going to show you a couple more cuts now using a smaller piece of wood. Let's wrap up here talking about the Schrade SCX9. First thing I'll tell you is that I did a bunch more cutting off camera. I just didn't feel like you probably wanted to see, you know, 20 minutes of me hacking at different things. Um, let's talk about the axe first. I do like the axe. I do like this, the shape of the blade. I do like that kind of that flattened edge as opposed to that curved edge that you have on the SCX2. Uh, the weight of the axe is nice. I'll show you down here at the bottom. But at the bottom of the handle, there's a little bit of a divot um, that comes out. Scoop is because you can lock your hands in nice and tight very uh just gives you good solid control of the axe so that has been a plus uh, it's not a textured pommel on the back but there is a pommel so that's good and um as far as the you know the over mold here this style um fiskers does that gerber does that a bunch of other companies do that some people love it some people hate it that's a preference thing um, it's very popular and the research says that it's actually very strong let me show you down here what i'm talking about this little divot that comes out when you're actually holding on to the axe it feels like as you swing it you got good solid control of it like it's not going to come flying out of your hands. The one thing I will say about using the axe is because of this cutout here, which is where the saw folds out from, uh, I found my fingers kind of falling into that. If I was using this with a pair of gloves, I think it would be very comfortable. With that, it wasn't terrible, but I did notice it after a while that, you know, just the skin of my fingers is kind of slipping in there. And so that's a little bit uncomfortable. Again, not terrible, but something that maybe in version 2.0, they want to think about how to address that if they can. Um, and also for you the, as the user, if you're using this long term, maybe all day long on a camping or something, doing something in the outdoors, um, you may want to uh, you may want to have a pair of gloves on while you're using the axe portion of the uh, of the SC axe knife. For starters, let me say I had to back up because the blade length is so long for the saw. I had to back up to get the whole thing in view. The blade length overall could be a plus or a minus. I do have a a very slight bend uh, in the blade now from using it. And that's because if you're, uh, if you're cutting something that's not really thick and it's not supporting the blade the entire way. So say you're cutting something this wide, it's going to support the blade because it's in between those two pieces of wood. If you're cutting something that's really small or thin, it is going to flex a bit more. So that's just something to keep in mind. Again, maybe in version 2.0, they'll offer you different blade options. So a shorter one and then a longer one like this. Um, as far as cutting, it worked fine. I will tell you that when it came to how, how I was going to hold it, let me just snap the snap down here. Um, I did have the sheath on and so I was holding it like this and kind of like this and I was doing, you know, I was cutting like this. It wasn't um, the most comfortable. Uh, it, it was, I found it to be the most effective, um, but there's, you know, there's not, this is not all smoothed out. Even when you have the, um, the nylon uh, sheath on this, it's comfortable. It's not great though. Uh, I was also holding it like this up here, you know, and doing cuts with just one hand, cutting like so. And that was, that was decently comfortable. I did find for the larger pieces of wood it was easier to use and for the smaller pieces I probably would have just used the axe or even my knife just kind of you know beaver chew through it and then break it off. Uh, but the fact that you have a saw and an axe in one item I think that's pretty cool. So let's talk about who the SC Axe 9 is for or where it would be used. For me if I think about using this at home if I'm out in the backyard you know 
trimming up some trees, cutting some wood. I'm probably not going to go to this because I'm going to have a standalone axe and then probably a bow saw, a fixed bow saw, not a collapsible, or you know, a pruning saw of some sort. So, and that's because I can run to my shed or I can run in the house and grab the gear that I need immediately. So I probably wouldn't use it just in the backyard in general. For camping, absolutely. So now you got both those items in one tool. That's cool. You don't have to worry about you know maybe dropping one or losing one. They're all together, um, and it's it's a relatively it's not a huge item, but it's a larger item, so it's going to be harder to uh, lose. What about people who want to keep something like this in their car? Definitely. So don't forget, you have the axe, you have the saw, you also have this pommel, which you can use as a hammer. So you get three tools essentially in one, and to keep it you know in the trunk of your car for emergency situations, great application. For wilderness survival people, bushcrafters, it's gonna be kind of a what's your taste, right? So for most people, they don't have these two tools in one, they have a folding saw and then maybe an ax or a hatchet, something like that. Uh, for some folks, they're gonna want those two things separate because they want a very specific saw and a very specific ax. Other people are gonna say, hey, if I can get two into one, that's great, it's fewer things I can drop, fewer things I can lose. Um, and so again, because this thing is not a tiny little object, it's gonna be less likely that you're gonna lose it. So in the wilderness survival bushcrafting thing, you're gonna to have to see if this actually fits into your uses and applications. As I close out the video here, down in the comments section below, why don't you post either what your favorite ax, hatchet, or saw is that you use in camping, wilderness survival, bushcrafting, hunting, whatever it might be. And let's get the discussion started below. If you could like this video and also subscribe and share it with other friends, that'd be awesome. Thanks as always for checking out our videos here on YouTube. I want to remind you we're on all the social media outlets. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Tumblr, and we're on Instagram as well. More videos coming soon. Take care. Hello, wind. Hello. Ah, oh, Dorothy, Dorothy, ah. Oh.